like I've said before, laughter is the best medicine and technically comedians are the best doctors. So we have with us the bop of all the comedy doctors here, Mr. Sanjay Manaktara. Hi Sanjay, welcome to our show. Thank you very much, I'm very excited to be here. Yeah. <laughs> So Sanjay, you are a techie and you were in the US. Generally people move from here to US and do their masters and make a career out of it. But you did the other way around. So yes. <laughs> how did that happen? How did you get to move to Bangalore? So it was interesting. I was about to quit my job in the US. I grew up there. I was born and brought up there. Typical IT middle class boy, engineering like parents wanted. And I emailed my boss saying I'm going to quit. So I'm just going to take a three month uh, vacation okay. uh, or like time off while I decide things. And as I was about to officially quit in the end of those three months, he said, I have an opportunity for you in India, okay. uh, in Chennai or Bangalore. And having never been here, I didn't know the difference too much. So <laughs> I just I just did some Googling and my mom is a big fan of uh, Sai Baba. So oh, okay. I was like, let's go to Bangalore because then she has easy access, right? To yeah. <laughs> go over there. And then, uh, yeah, I started working here and I built the comedy scene here. Okay, so how did you start in Bangalore? Because when you moved here, when, when you started comedy, I think it was, you were the first person who started it here, uh, stand-up comedy scene and open mics and stuff. So how did that journey begin? Sure, yeah, so there was a place called Kaira, which uh, was right down the road, very close to here in Indranagar, and they had an open mic. I, if you googled open mic Bangalore in 2010, it was this place that would show up. And it was like poetry and music and, you know, guys with the guitar just trying to impress their girlfriend one time and then never come back. So I approached the owner and he said, yeah, I'd tell jokes, I don't care. Yeah. And so for about the first three months, I was performing there for him and the waiters, basically. Okay. For about, you know, five people in the whole 200 seater. Oh. And uh, there I met Praveen and Sandeep and this guy, Sham, uh, Dr. Sham Butt, who's now also doing very big things. and. Uh, we just started kind of building the scene that way, yeah, after that. So literally from getting booed off stage and getting uh, bartenders and club owners telling us to get lost uh, into now those same people saying, hey, please yeah. come back for a show. <laughs> I was just about to say yeah. that now all your shows are like, you know, sold out and uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, not, not all of them, but um, a lot of them do tend to be sold out, yes. And uh, yeah, it's very exciting, but it's a very, you know, I knew from the American comedy scene that no one's going to hand you anything and you have to do a lot of things yourself. You have yeah. to do marketing, design, promotion, management operations. Yeah. So that was the kind of attitude I instilled in a lot of the comedians you see today. Okay, so what's the difference between the comedy scene back in US and how is it in India? Guys, remember when Facebook just became popular? It used to be so easy to like charm a girl, women would just like take selfies. <laughs> I'm so cute. 800 likes. <laughs> so, there's, there's quite a few differences and quite a few similarities. Number one, in India, people are still learning what comedy is. So a lot of the audiences that come to our shows, for example, they've never seen a comedy show before, okay? Oh. Um, generally, every single show, you'll see five, ten people, I've never been for stand-up comedy. Your <laughs> talk was nice. You had a very nice talk. It's like, no, I did a comedy monologue. but. <laughs> Um, so that's there. So in that sense, a lot of the jokes, um, I call it low-hanging fruit in, uh, in Indian comedy. And it's, I don't mean low-hanging like it's bad. I mean, as aside from when Russell Peters would come, he would just talk about the Indian accent. Yeah. But now there's so much to talk about. Politics, family dynamics, South India versus North India, Bollywood, etc. So there's so much material, mm -hmm. so much content out there that anybody can really make a name for themselves in a year or two uh -huh. in the Indian comedy scene. Yeah. Whereas in the American comedy scene, comics for 50, 60, 100 years have been talking about divorce or children or Hollywood or, uh. you know, uh, England versus America or whatever it is. Okay, so okay. Uh, it's a very exciting time to be here right now. And just like with companies like Coca-Cola or Pepsi who want to set up shop in India, now a lot of comics from overseas mm -hmm. are seeing India as a massive market okay. because we have a rising middle class and we can fill out 500 seater, 1,000 seaters and that oh, sort of okay. stuff. So it's, it's, it's really awesome. Uh, time to be here and the scene is like it's growing so fast that anybody can make a mark a lot faster than had they been just in the US. Yeah, so even the internet, YouTube is 
everywhere. All the stand-up comedy videos, they just keep popping up on my feeds. Oh, this guy's like, hey, Sri Lord, break it come on. Nandi Hills, bro, let's go. <laughs> hey, bro, let's put our ass to the camera. Look, Bangalore Airport, bro. Oh my God, look, Spice Jet to Goa, bro. Look at all the dreamers and the wanderers. There they go. Uh -huh. <laughs> So oh, I, you know, it, me too. In fact, it's. I was joking with a, a few comedians the other day because, see, your feed will be people also in media and your friends yeah. and family. My entire friend circle are also comedians. Uh -huh. So my news feed is, you know, a tool cut three in front of 8,000 people and then, you know, whatever, Sora Punt, 8,000 people. And I'm just looking like, I didn't do 8,000 people. This <laughs> one is just auditorium selfie after auditorium selfie, right? Um, but it's uh, it, it's fun and uh, you know I it, it's just very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So um, about the audience in India, mostly they take a lot of jokes. Um, you know they get offended a lot. So uh, but most of your jokes are clean jokes and that everyone can relate to. So uh, how did you figure this out? So I was very scared when I was working at my IT company. I was working at, what would I, what I say on stage? I won't tell you the name, but it rhymes with Beck Center. I, play, uh, I saw this vlogger, I was like, yo, what up, sister? And she was like, nothing, just use a Windows Vista. Lady, please, and I kept on walking. Off to my job for some Facebook stalking. No pulls up and he starts to brag. You wanna see all the downloaded movies I had? Hold me please, I don't need to see I got three terabytes on my FTP So I hook select on two one and Lewis And auto pulls up and I said let's do this Yeah, um, so I worked at this place And you know, you were a little cautious that If somebody sees you in the newspaper Or they see you in the pub That uh, maybe you are uh, you know, doing something you shouldn't be. Uh -huh. I realize now nobody cared. Yeah. It was just a hobby like a lot of these guys at Adobe or Whipro play guitar on the weekends, right? So I always didn't want to do sex jokes. I didn't want to do too many dirty things and all of that. Also, one thing I realized with comedy is there's a huge market performing in corporates. Yeah. So yeah. in corporates, you can't really be too naughty. You can be a little naughty, but you can't, you know, tell a team of 500 HR people and 600 developers, like, hey, eh, eh. like, <laughs> they're going to get very awkward, right? And you're not going to make any money. So yeah. that, that was one reason. But the main reason I heard for any content, right, whether it's comedy or, or drama or anything, mm -hmm. You should really challenge yourself not to do the dirty jokes in mm. the beginning because yeah. then you get dependent on that. So it's so easy if like a 19 year old kid who sees us on stage wants to do comedy. That's so exciting. I'm going to be <laughs> popular and famous. And we always tell them only when you get 10 minutes of like clean jokes, yeah. then you can go into trying to do a joke about a honeymoon or, or whatever because then you've built that muscle. Yeah. You know, it's like only riding downhill versus learning how to ride uphill because you need to, and then you can go downhill very easily. You know, something like that. Uh, okay. I don't think she got the uh, analogy, but yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. So, I did, I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, I see a lot of uh, your videos, hashtag Sanjay Sketches, and yeah. uh, also the videos on Facebook. How can you be so hilarious? I mean, the fairness oh, video. Oh my goodness, yeah. Which I shot right here, right here. Yeah. Yeah. The fairness video. How did you get that idea? Just to tell people that this doesn't work. <laughs> well, it, it's so funny because it's literally shot right behind us. And this is, you know, in my in my house. So. so I thought, why not see if these things really work? I'm sure people have tried before, but I'm going to try it on my hands. So my right hand, all jokes aside, is going to be the one that I'm applying. All the, I guess, cream too. Uh, and then the left hand, I'm gonna leave untouched. I'm gonna do this for 15 days and let's see what happens. Day two, I don't know if you can notice any good rubbing in. Day two, day three, right hand. I had bought a pack of toothpaste because I also find this hypocritical. Fair skin, no, but white teeth, yes, that I need <laughs> right away, right? So I bought that teeth whitening Colgate or whatever. And uh, I was like, wow, this box is kind of big. And I opened it and then was the pack of fairness cream, like free sample. And I was like, man, I can't believe I bought this. <laughs> I felt so guilty, like in my, but I was like, well, time to have fun with it. 
and I had just got this little camera tripod for my dining table. Mm -hmm. So I thought this will be so easy every morning, just have the cell phone, put it on, do it for 10 days. And then 10 days, then the tube kept lasting for 20 days and then 30 days. And by the end of it, I just had this whole thing and I had never done a video where you match cut on yourself yeah. <laughs> so often. Even I was like, how do I look in 30 days? And uh, surprisingly, that video was very well received. Yeah. I thought it would get a few thousand views and go nowhere, but I think it got 50, 60,000 views and people were just messaging and sharing and saying all sorts of things. Yeah. It was very cool. It, it is hilarious. I mean, I watched it and I couldn't stop laughing. I was like, how can he make this so funny? Because that was the time when the whole debate about racism was happening and, uh, you know, dark skinned people were getting mocked at. So that was when this video came and it was so right there at this on the spot <laughs> well that's you know that's the crazy thing in comedy we say timing is everything right mm, timing is a exactly. huge thing but i had no agenda when i was making that video that in 30 days there's going to be some big drama about light skin fair skin you know i just made it when i got the thing at the store and to be honest it should have been out two weeks before that but okay. the tube kept lasting <laughs> so so then when i put it out you know sometimes like people don't people think there's a whole strategy and that we do things we're just the ones doing them and obviously if you do them enough at some point you're gonna get lucky in the sense like it might hit the right chord at the right yes, time yes, and i didn't even absolutely. realize that there was a thing there but i guess there was yeah so, so yeah the timing was absolutely right like spot on <laughs> timing is everything in comedy yes yes all right so um so many comics say that you are you're like their guru you are the one who gives them that push and you teach them and uh, you, you make them big and you make them what they are. So how does it feel to know that you have inspired so many young comics? Uh, it feels good uh, to a lot of degree. Um, I mean as we were talking about earlier before the camera started rolling, there is like a point you have to think do I focus on other people or do I focus on me or whatever but uh, I've just it's just been one of those things I've always been fairly helpful and I like to talk that's why I like giving advice you know even if I'm <laughs> even if it's the wrong advice I just like to give it so with every uh, comedian that comes through the doors whether it's in the last five years last two years last one year I try to treat them all the same you know I try to you know tell them like the same thing I would tell a Praveen or a Sandeep or a Vamsi I would tell to some kid who's just come only thing now is the scene has gotten so big yeah a lot of young 18, 20, 22 year old comedians are messaging me, sir, can, can I meet you? I'm like, I don't have the time to meet and give you like the most basic advice, but yeah. I have a blog out. Mm -hmm. And on my blogs, I write the exact same conversation I have yeah. with hundreds of people so that they can get that advice. But okay. it feels good to know that that might be my reputation. I'm very excited by that. Um, I'm a strong believer in karma, mm -hmm. you know? I always say karma exists, but it's never on time. <laughs> so you might feel that, you know, like, at first I would think like, okay, I'm going to help so many people and it's going to help me in return. But I realize that's the wrong thing. Right now, I just do things for the sake of doing it. When I'm free, I like to hang out. I like to give advice to comics. I like to hear their feedbacks on my content. Okay. Um, but it's good. I, it's definitely better than, oh, he's that douchebag or he's that <laughs> rude, mean comedian who never gives us a chance. I try to help as much as I can. Okay. So, uh How's it going with Varun? I mean, I see a lot of your videos together. Yeah. Uh, they, you had you had made one Anu Aunty video. Yeah, me, Varun, Samuki, and a yeah. few people. Yeah. And Brother uh, V. Brother yeah. V also. And recently the exam video came up. First things first, you're an idiot. idiot. Career choices, they are limited. They are limited. But this is middle class life. Engineer degree means good wife. You should want job choices like he. Anu Aunty. It's time that you knew this I won't work all day Don't want MBA Entrepreneur Repeat after me Desire to make my own company I'm young and have time If I get funding, I'm fine Yeah. How do you come up with these 
these really quirky uh, subjects to make really good videos like that. So with Varun, it's interesting because he always has, hi Varun if you're watching, <laughs> he, he always has the concepts, right? Yeah. So Anu Aunty, I would argue, is like his life's work or was his life's work. Yes. And then that book is right here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so that was his baby. And then uh, the exam anthem, I think he also, that's his space, academia, mm. studies, college and all. And his market is obviously younger than my market. Yeah. Um, where I came in was he knew that I like to rap, I like to do stuff about mm -hmm. engineering and technology mm -hmm. and obviously I had the video production and the, and the talent to, to <laughs> make it happen. So the IT guy would do. The IT, yeah, <laughs> so he had seen that I know how to run and gun and shoot and he can bring that production capability of the fancy, you know, 5 lakh camera things and all that crazy stuff. So. Anu Aunty, he approached me to write it. Uh, I wrote most of it. Uh, he obviously had a lot of input. Brother V wrote his verse. I roped in Samuki, who I think hit, hit a home run. She hit a six when she got that role, and that really put her, you know, she did so well in that. Um, and then the exam anthem, he approached me. We met about five, six times earlier this year, uh, and we just knocked it out over a period of like a month and a half. And uh, he got, we got to go to a helipad, so yes. rich guy that he knew. And, that video was also quite well received. I was yeah. quite shocked by that. And because uh, everyone can uh, totally relate to that video, right? Exam anthem. Uh, I mean, exams are getting closer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, it, I, I loved doing the video and I loved all the feedback we yeah. got from the video. But I was just like, my, I was in Bombay and my cousin, who's, uh, you know, he, he has a video production house. And he was like, dude, it was an awesome video. And I was like, thanks, man. And he's like, but. You guys are in your 30s, why are you talking about exams? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, dude. I was like, Varun wanted to do it because he has a huge college market. But like, yeah. so I, I'm kind of like, I mean, I'll give advice to youngsters when they, youngsters I say now. That's how old I am, I'm calling them youngsters. But uh, I give advice. You're not old. No, I know. I mean, I, I'm relatively still young, but I'm not 19 or 18 worrying about my exams, right? Those days are long gone. So, um, with comedy, you always have to wonder, like, do I talk about me? Do I talk about what the market wants to hear? Mm. Do I talk about what Kangana and Rithik or Karan Joshar, or, uh, Karan Karan Joshar are, are saying? So I'm just kind of like figuring that out. Sorry, I went off on a tangent. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so you are an engineer who became a comic. And today we see a lot of engineers turning into comics. So why should engineers become stand-up comedians? Why should engineers become stand-up comedians? It's so funny you asked that question because I saw, I saw a meme or a meme, whatever they call it, uh, the other day about in like 1990 engineer was a guitar player and like, you know, in uh, 2000 engineer was DSLR photographer and now 2017 engineer is stand-up comedian, right? <laughs> so I think uh, why should engineers become stand-up comedians? I don't think all engineers should become stand-up comedians, but if I had to give reasons, number one, we're very creative. Mm -hmm. So we know how to solve problems because most engineers, we have no clue what we're doing. We have no, we just study the paper, but we don't understand yeah. Dijkstra's algorithm or the coefficient of friction or all these physics and, and uh, you know, uh, fluid mechanic things. So the fact that we don't know what we're doing and we still somehow <laughs> do it as engineers, I think is basically what, how you would describe stand-up comedians. <laughs> People always ask, I don't get it, I was nervous, I forgot, how do you do it? I just do it, man. Like, I suck just as bad as you're gonna suck. If I probably sucked worse, but it, comedy, just like studying for engineering exam, it's a lot of brute force. Huh. So yeah. the people who shy away are the ones who overanalyze, but once you just start doing it and you start succeeding at it, you're like, wow. Like, I was a miserable graduate of my school, UC Irvine, right? <laughs> I'm in their alumni magazine as a comedian who's doing all these big yes, things now. But yes. if they knew my GPA, <laughs> people who wrote it, it was not great. But same thing with when I was working in IT. I was, I was getting promoted so fast, um, but I wasn't the sharpest guy in school. Yeah. Uh, because it's about, you know, mixing your book smarts with your street smarts. Yes, and I exactly. think comedy is a lot of that as well. Okay, so yeah, even I'm an engineer, but I moved to this. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Like, what's that saying? Like, beta, you can do anything you want to do after engineering. After engineering. After engineering, right? So, or beta, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So, uh, how were your parents when you moved here and you completely changed your line of work to comedy? Um, you know, they were okay. I think my mom obviously had the biggest uh, reservations, but 
I did it very smart, the way an engineer would, you know, I don't want to pat myself on the back, but I did not say I'm going to quit my job immediately because a lot of people do that and then yeah. they go back to their jobs because the money is not coming in. Exactly. So I was working out here and you know, when you're in your 20s, hell, even in your early 30s, if you're not married or you don't have kids, and even if you do, there's still a way. But, you know, you can do two hours of Facebook less and you can go yeah. to the open mic or you can go talk to a pub owner in your house, whether yeah. you're in Vizag or, you know, Coimbatore or wherever. Mm. Things can be done, right? Yeah. So I just started, um, I started doing it and not telling my mom. Okay. So, you know, like, <laughs> she's like, where were you? And I was like, mm, I was on a date doing drugs, not telling me. <laughs> like, uh, that's when I was like, oh, oh, that's fine. You know, like that sort of stuff. That is fine. Yeah, yeah. Thinking and partying, you know, meeting women, fine. But comedy, no, no, no. So, I, uh, I didn't tell her for the longest time. Mm -hmm. And only when I started, I made a rule to myself that once I start earning 30% of my IT salary mm -hmm. with comedy, then I'm gonna think about it. Okay. And when I start earning 50%, I'm gonna start making the steps to make it happen. Okay. And when I start earning 75%, I'm gonna quit my, my job. And, and for three months, I made 100% of my daily salary, wow. or of my monthly salary in comedy. I quit my job. In the next three months, I made nothing. <laughs> because that's the business that we live in. Then work dries up, or demonetization, or whatever it is. Yeah, so yeah. I was very strategic. And by then, my mom was very comfortable that I still had my savings and I had other things going on. Okay. Talking about challenges and uh, like you said, you can go out of work anytime. Yep. So what are the different challenges and how do you face the ups and downs of uh, this industry? So, it, it's interesting because we were talking about, you know, what does it feel like to be a mentor and to coach a lot of people. At the same time, like who's coaching me? You know, like everybody needs, even like if you're like a Bollywood or a Hollywood celebrity and you're 25, 30, you still need that 40 year old Brad Pitt or the 50 year old Jude Law, whoever, Hugh Jackman to tell you what it was like yeah. so that you make the right steps going exactly. forward. Okay, you have $10 million now, here's how you get to 100 or whatever yeah. the case is. So I think one of the challenges I never knew going into this because I had never done this yeah. was just because you're really hot one year hmm. is not going to mean that uh, you're going to sustain it, right? So, yeah. you know, when we did videos, I used to do videos with Kenny quite a bit about the IT stuff and comedy yeah. things. Yeah. And I had a really good run in the beginning. And then unless I kept doing that, I was like, I don't only want to make IT videos, so let me try other things. Uh -huh. But then the scene is changing. People want Hindi comedy or they want other things. Okay. So your kind of position is always kind of changing, right? One of the things, I mean, I tell this to every single comic, and I think in any industry this mm -hmm. is true, even harder than getting to the top is staying there, yeah. right? That's probably much harder. So for any comedian, I would say always be humble, you know, always be ready that you just as fast as you might have made it up in one year, two years, five years, you can easily just come back down a lot faster yeah. or you can stay stagnant. So nobody taught me that. I kind of learned that the hard way, but I think everybody knows that now. Um, and so, yeah, and obviously the failures are, you can see many TED Talks, you can hear all the stories from all the gurus on TV about failure and fall down and get back up and all that stuff. But falling hurts, man. It, yeah. it hurts a lot. And, you know, what, what's interesting about comedy is if you have a bad, if you have a bad interview or if you have a bad day in Wipro or if you mess up on the PPT presentation, yeah. okay, you messed up, your boss is angry at you the client didn't buy the product or they might but it might take longer you go home you have your beer you forget about it right with comedy if i have a bad show it's not that they didn't like the show they didn't like the jokes they didn't like me you know yeah. like yeah. i go back knowing 100 people do not like me okay. and so it's like in any comedian yeah. every comedian has been through this okay. but no one like prepares you for that so it's probably the first hundred bad shows i had and i mean that that might sound weird, but every comedian has had at least a hundred bad shows, I would say. Um, oh. It's just, no one prepares you, and I just, uh, you know, I couldn't sleep that night and all that sort of stuff. And now I've kind of come, uh, come to peace with it. Okay, so, yeah, that is, that is quite disturbing. I mean, because you put up, uh, you put out yourself right there, because you'll be selling yourself, your jokes. Obviously, it'll reflect a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be like you are your own product, right? Yeah. A lot of uh, comedians from Bangalore keep moving to Mumbai. Like, uh, 
Kenny, Kanan, Beswa, Kanan, Beswa, Sumuki. So, uh, when are you moving on? Are you even planning on moving to Mumbai anytime? So, I'm not planning on it. I've been asked to come there many times. I just came back from Mumbai last week. I spent five days there. Yeah. And I think I heard this question like eight times <laughs> uh, a day, I would say, from all the various people I was meeting. Um, I should move there, 100%, I agree. Uh, it's not about, you know, like we were talking that the beauty of the internet is you can do anything from everywhere. And by the way, the beauty of Indians is they are everywhere. <laughs> so yeah. you can become popular in India or Bangalore or Mumbai or yeah. whatever. And then you can sell out a theater in Singapore, Canada, whatever. Exactly. They see crowd, but thank yeah. God we spread like, like fire because it, it's good for you. You know, it's good for all of us. So um, I've been debating whether I, st I stay in India or if I go back to the U.S. I'm writing a book right now. The book oh, is yeah. done. I'm waiting for it to, to, uh, to see how it does when it releases. Oh. If the book does really well and the videos really pick up, I will probably move to Mumbai. Okay. Um, if it does not, I'll probably want to be in the U.S. for some time, kind of reshifting my comedy angle to kind of get a wider reach that way. Okay. All right. But so. at some point, yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's have a... Quick fire round? Yeah. Okay. Quick fire round, huh? Yeah. <laughs> this is pressure is on. Yeah. I said wildfire. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, USA or India? In what sense? You can't ask me that. That's gonna be com that's gonna be completely construed the wrong way. Yeah. Okay, India, okay. fine. Fine. Yeah. I thought yeah, anyway, <laughs> let's okay. move on. And you love uh, good food, yeah. Indians are everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who would you go on a date with? Priyanka or Deepika? Deepika. Mount Carmel, huh? Yeah. Oh, she yeah. yeah Bangalore. <laughs> neighbor, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bangalore, I'm sure she knows me. Yeah, yeah. So. All right, what would you say to the CEO of Snapchat? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish you the best, sir. And you're, and, yeah. and, uh, you're ruining Snap. Oh, I thought you said Snap Deal. <laughs> to him, I would also say good luck. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, to Snap Deal and Snapchat. Good luck to both of you. Although a snap deal, you got it. Never mind. Yeah. So. <laughs> Alright. If a biopic was made about you and your life, what would it be called? Except the NRI. Mm, that thing, yeah. right? Okay, the NRI. Da, 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 da. Uh, if a biopic was made on my life, it would be called Quarter Life Crisis. I would say because um, I always, you know, that sh that store Forever Twenty One. Yes. I always act like I'm Forever Twenty Five. <laughs> like it's just that I finally got a little bit of money and I'm living alone. Let me just live this life for as long as I can. <laughs> so I call it quarter life crisis. Yeah. Okay. Most annoying part of your job. Most annoying part of my job, um, constant feedback. I would say no other job. <laughs> Do you? Can you wake up for like you know reading ten horrible YouTube comments? Go back to oh America, God. or you're awesome, or whatever. But like, <laughs> you know, we kind of cut ourselves with like feedback because okay. like you know it's not going to be good. You know that video of yours is not good, but you open it up anyways. Yeah. Really? I mean, that's I mean, there's not many annoying parts of the job, but I'm saying if I had this is rapid fire, right? So yeah. I'm not thinking okay. as much. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. there's probably a lot. Okay, the most annoying part of the job is probably the paperwork. Send me an invoice, make a Facebook Live video, promote the show. If I'm bringing the comedians to a show and then the bar is not taking it seriously or the yeah. pub is not taking it and they want us to do all the work, that's very annoying. Yeah. Okay. Alright. So, moving ahead. What would you do if you woke up as a woman one day? Look in the mirror. Probably the first I would do that because I'd be like, is this for real or is, this, <laughs> is my mind playing tricks on me? Uh, the second thing I would do is I would probably... I don't know, download Tinder and like see how pathetic <laughs> men are, I guess. I <laughs> oh, they are. Yeah, I can, they I can are. imagine. <laughs> yeah. Am I a woman forever or just for one day? One day. One day. Oh yeah, so I'm going to do all the undercover research I can to see how pathetic <laughs> men can be. And I'm going to use that to my advantage later. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be like, oh wow, and just do that all day. That I wouldn't, that I don't care. Like that, anybody can do. But it's like, uh, I would do as much. You're playing for the other side, no? You're a spy. Exactly. Also, what I would probably do towards the end of the day is I would start flirting with my guy friends and just see how <laughs> pathetic they are and screenshotting those messages and then just use that against them later. Yeah, that I would do for sure. Beware. Beware. I'm not, I don't plan on being a woman for a day anytime soon. But you never know if the right role comes up. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. So, worst pickup line that you have used? Oh, this is uh, this is one of my favorites. You have to play along, okay? You have to play along. Uh, yeah. This somebody told me, but this is great. 
Hi, I think you dropped something. Oh, wh what was it? Your standards. Hi, I'm Sanjay. <laughs> That's yeah. my favorite. That's my favorite line. And good, she played along. She's like, "Oh, what? Thank you." All right. Because some people say, "Oh, did I?" No, no, no. That's not. You have to say what. Yeah. So. All right. Best pickup line used on you. Best pickup line used on me. Oh my God! Some girl messaged me uh, the other day. What did she say? Um, uh, she said, "Can I offer you something?" Uh, a drink, a dinner, my eggs, or oh, something oh, like, like that. Oh, she said, oh, <laughs> that, "That's too much." Oh, but it was something about like eggs being fertilized, and I was like, "Whoa, miss! Like that's very heavy." And, and this was on like Facebook or Instagram oh, or something, and I, I started laughing. I said, "Like my ovaries, I don't know, like whatever she said." But uh, it was very. She was teasing me. Yeah, she was flirting. But, uh, it was so funny. Yeah. I was like, woof. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what would you do? What would you say to Vijay Malia? Uh, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Again. Again. I would say that to him. I would ask him. See, like we make a lot of jokes about him, but man, he owes a lot of people a lot of money, right? So I'd say at least pay those folks. But uh, I don't know. I'd say thanks for the career because we made a career off of his <laughs> shenanigans. As we say. Okay. So I'd say good luck, thank you, and uh, you know, pay your employees probably. So. Okay. So, uh, what would you do if uh, Donald Trump to walk right here, right now, and say, Sanjay, let's go, let's go back to US? Mm -hmm. Do I get to ride in his plane with him? Yeah, I'm going for sure, <laughs> dude. <laughs> That's a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm your president. Come back to US. <laughs> yeah, I would go. I would. I, you look. I have standards and morals too. But if I get a free ride with the president of the United States, whether or not I like him or not, I'm gonna go for it. All right. I'm gonna go chill with him, like um. you know, and hang out with him, like. It's so funny, celebrities always talk bad about the president, but the second they get invited to the White House or something, they're gonna go, right? So, <laughs> and if I'm that rich of a celebrity where I make more than the president, uh, then I might have a bit of a thing. But right now, I, don't, <laughs> I think, I don't know, let's see. Let's see what else he does to make me shift my, uh, okay. to shift my morals, yeah. All right, so uh, finally, what would your word be to, uh, okay, that's the end of the okay. choir. So moving on. Um, what would be your word to uh, prospective comedians, to the youngsters who are, who are looking up to you, who are looking up to a lot of comedians and who want to make a career out of it? You know, Nike has that saying, just do it, right? And I wish people across comedy, but even across India, I've been here seven years now. Yeah. And just like we're making a movie, you know, a TV show right now and people make films, you live in a time where anybody can do anything. Yeah. And as they see is we overanalyze everything. Okay? Mm -hmm. We overanalyze, you know, I, I saw a friend do a joke the other day, I think this kid Rupin or Sridhar, he's like, we ha we we have coaching exams and then we have mock exams for the coaching exam. They get into the coaching center, they get yeah. into the IIT. So we just over prepare but we never end up doing things. And the ones who succeed in this country or any country are the ones who don't think I need to get this degree or this certification. You're going to get those anyways. But, you know, so many kids write me about comedy, about filmmaking, and you live in a time where you can learn it and no one is going to want to help you until you start doing things on your own, you know? Yes. If a kid is asking me, I have stage fright, I'm like, bro, that's level one of this career. Level two is like, you're doing it now for two years, now you're yeah. trying to get more shows and yeah. you've established that. So. Uh, just start doing it because everybody before you has done it, everyone after you will do it. You are probably, none of us are smarter or dumber than anybody. Like, yeah. we're all capable. So, the people, some of the comedians I see who are even the most successful or the ones who are getting shows, they're not the funniest, probably myself included, but they're the ones who have the discipline and the desire and yeah. the perseverance to keep doing it. So, I would, I would just say, yeah, like Nike made a billion dollar, billions of dollars because of that, those three words, mm. and that's that's the philosophy yeah. for life. Yeah. All right. So that's that was it deep. for yeah, yeah. doing so deep. So deep. <laughs> Sanjay Comedy sponsored by Reebok. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So thank you, Sanjay, for being with us. It thank was you. it was great having you here. It was great talking to you. So thank you for your time, uh, for making time out of your busy schedule. Yeah, uh, talking about busy schedule, what are your hobbies? 
Yeah, she knew that I wasn't as busy. That's why she's. That's why she's asking. She was like, as I'm saying this, he's not. My hobby. No, no, no. I, I, you are busy. You are everywhere. You go. Last week you were in Mumbai. Yeah. A couple of months ago you were in the U.S. Well, it's funny you ask because this teddy bear you guys have put in the back. I made. I make this, by the way. I don't oh. know. I made these myself. Yeah. Oh. I had a company called Fluffy Sing. Hey. Yeah. So this is. Uh, they we kind of shut operations right now, but I'm the one who make these. Okay. Yeah, I had a builder and all that. Um, but my hobbies are obviously. I, I'm into this gym kick right now, so mm -hmm. I'm going. I do yoga now. I, oh. I've tried yoga. I tried doing it for comedy. I thought I'd get some funny material. Like, oh, these hippies and all. <laughs> and a white girl named Shanti, whatever the heck. And now oh, I'm like, this is so... I hope of you video. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and now I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> like, I'm at peace. So I like, I go to the gym now a few hours a day. Um, I cook occasionally. Um, you know, I go on dates, ladies. Yeah. Uh, what's, that's not a hobby. But like, <laughs> maybe once a week, once every two weeks. Um, and yeah, I just, uh, you know, otherwise I'm pretty much married to the work that I do. So writing, performing, editing, you know, and all sorts of stuff. And then I like watching Netflix and chilling, like for real, chilling um, and hanging out. Yeah, that's about it. Okay. So yeah, that's about it. And uh, okay, so thank you for being with us on the show. It was great having you here and uh, our pleasure <laughs> talking thank to you. Thank you very much. I had thank a great you. time. Thank you guys. Thanks a lot. Yeah. And All thank right. you guys. <laughs> okay. So any word to our viewers? No guys, please do check me out on Facebook, YouTube. Yeah. Please give my links, whatever. S Monic, Sanjay Comedy, whatever. NRI Comedy on Facebook. And uh, please come for a show. Please support stand-up comedy across the Desi community and everywhere else and I look forward to seeing you guys out somewhere yeah all right thank you so much thank you and hi mom so, yeah. all right guys so that's it for today that was Sanjay Manaktala and I'll see you in the next episode uh, till then keep watching YTV stay tuned bye bye